Hi, I'm Scott. It's Azure Friday. I'm here with Stefan talking about Azure websites. Uh, so I've got a lot of websites, and I believe if we look over here on the right-hand side, uh, most of them have custom domains. These are some of my little demo ones, and you yep. see they have dot Azure websites, but Baby Smash and Lost Phone Screen. Azure is a great way to throw up a one or two pager site. Yes, just when you're definitely. being when you're being silly, especially since I said before I've got a standard web. Um, uh, standard VM. Mm -hmm. So w when I have an idea, I just make it happen and I throw it in there because I can have 500 websites in yeah, one VM. Yeah, it, it's great. So even though Hansel Minutes is the kind of the big man on campus in that one virtual machine, uh, I've got a little site here called Keys Left that I made with uh, some friends. This is a thing that counts that you have a finite number of keystrokes left in your hands before you die. <laughs> so you know, how old are you? I'm 40. How fast do you type? You know, 100 words a minute. Uh, I have this many keystrokes left before I die, and it's actually counting down. Oh boy! Okay. And, well. and it calculates how many novels. Good. Oh, good. well. The, how many? The, I, I'm pleased to see how many tweets left we have. because yeah. I think that's that's the that's really the, value yeah, right that's there. That's what we need to know. The yeah. fact that we've got I've got two million tweets left, and you can see it's counting down, which is making me very sad. But really, I need to think about what the computer programs I want to write are. Well, that's good. That's 575, so you can get at least the first 500 into one account on Azure websites or we with a number e of host names. Right? <laughs> or we could email Scott Goo a million times. Uh, so this was a silly little site that I threw up, and it was really a, a lot very simple, because yep. once you start understanding Azure websites, as you'll see in some of the other videos, I made a single page. It was index.html, some JavaScript, threw it up on GitHub, hooked it up to Azure websites, and it was great. But then I needed a domain. Ah, uh, yes. And I feel good about this domain. Uh, this their domain is called keysleft.com, which is good because it's small. Yes. Uh, what is the story? When can I do custom <coughs> domains in Azure websites? So you'll you'll see that um, when you're in the configure tab, you can do custom domains if you're running in either the shared mode or if you're running in standard mode. So it is something that you do have to even in shared mode pay us a little bit of money in order for us to set up the host names. Okay. Now, I assume you're going to walk through some of the details of like how do you actually get the custom domain names, and mm -hmm. then we can tie that back into how that flows back into Azure websites. Right. So I like to use uh, a place called uh, DNS Simple. You might use GoDaddy or Namecheap or lots of different places. You, can, you go and you get your domain. I've got a lot of domains. Each one of these represents a personal failure. Because they are, you know, I, I make these domains and I think I'm going to make a startup and then I don't and then well, I hate myself. Well, that's it. you should just wait for somebody else to make the successful startup and then charge yeah. them a, a million dollars for the, the host the, name. The real tragedy is the one about Good Scott, Bad Scott, <laughs> that, you know, Guthrie and I were going to do something and it never happened. Uh. It's just sad. <laughs> so uh, we'll go to Keys Left. So I bought Keys Left for the year, okay? And if I go here and manage, and now here's this is the most important thing that people don't realize about custom domains is every DNS record system is different. Correct. But DNS records are not different, and this is so confusing. I think every time I hear someone complaining about being able to set up custom domains in Azure, it's not that they're not smart. Yeah, it's it's confusing. It's well, it's right. not the Azure thing that's confusing. No, it's, it's it's DNS. Yes. Uh, I like DNS Simple just uh, because I like them, uh, because it's just very straightforward. I mean, this is unambiguous. Yep. It's a table that you fill out. And if I want to go and add records, there's this advanced editor. So I can go in here, and I've got my names and stuff, and I could say, add a C name. Perfect, yep. Name. And as I'm typing in the C name, if I was going to say, like, uh, mail, okay, notice that as I'm typing on the right hand side, it's showing me, okay, yep. mail is going to be an alias for foo.whatever.com. That makes it very unambiguous. Yep. Okay. So in Azure Websites, I click on Manage Domains. Right. What's with this AW Verify thing? So this is this is the thing where, you know, like everyone out there, we need to have some way to make sure that the, the developer, when they're typing in the domain name or names that they're registering with us, 
or more precisely, that they want to register with us for routing purposes in mm -hmm. terms of actually saying, yes, there was a request to say, you know, foo.com, yes, we'll actually serve up a uh, response back to that. We need to have some way to believe that, yeah, you probably are the owner of that actual domain, mm -hmm. right? And so that's a critical differentiation. Ultimately, we are not a domain registrar. Um, what you were just doing with DNS Simple, they are the registrar for the domain that we're talking about here. So the AW Verify is just a quick way to say, you know something, if you wanted, um, in this case, you're going for keysleft.com. Right. So we're saying, well, somewhere, if you actually own KeysLeft, you should go out and register this AW Verify uh, name, which is basically, it's, it's a fake name, right? You're not really going to use it for real. Right. And if you're actually able to register it with your domain registrar and we can look that up and find it, mm -hmm. we're willing to believe that the person typing in entries on this form is the same person who actually has rights to that domain on the domain registrar. Right. So what I ended up doing was taking the Azure website and DNS Simple and then putting them side by side. Perfect. And I recommend this to anybody who's going to do this kind of stuff. And I go and I typed in AW Verify. Yep, under the keys left, azurewebsites.net. Right, is a C name for Azure Verify. Dot, sorry, AW Verify. Dot keys left. Dot Azure Websites. Dot net. Right, so basically on the left hand side, because that's a subdomain under keys left, that's proving that yes, you actually have rights on this domain registrar to create that kind of subdomain. And then we're just using that to cross reference it to the simple name of the site as it exists here over on Azure websites. Mm -hmm. And this isn't used for serving traffic or anything. It's just, oh, you do really own that. Exactly. You're not evil completely. So then, if I was going to go and type in something like foo.keysleft.com, this is all happening kind of in real time. And you'll notice that it says, well, the DNS record could not be located. Are you, do, if you want foo to point somewhere, you're going to go and need to go and hook this up. Yes. So uh, underneath the hood, when you're typing in these various host names, I mean, we're doing two things. We're trying to make sure that, yes, you actually own the, the core subdomain. Also, we're trying to make sure that the, that the name even exists in the first place. Mm -hmm. So if I go and said something like foo is going to be keysleft.azurewebsites.net. Great. So, yep, so ultimately for the customer, foo.keysleft.com would route into us. So you put in that new C name. So I've added that there. Great. And I'll put this over here. And then this is where I think people get confused. How long do they wait? You know, do I wait five minutes or 10 minutes? It kind of all depends. Over here, there's this time to, uh, time, time to live. I never really know. Does that mean anything? Do I change that to one minute and hit refresh <laughs> frantically? So, uh, I mean, this is certainly a case where when, when you deal with domains, you probably want to always get your, your domain namespace set up ahead of time, as in, like, don't wait for the product launch um, at 8 a.m. in the morning and suddenly decide now's a good mm -hmm. time to register custom host names. Or a live taping. Uh, sure, yes, good point. Um, <laughs> Uh, but there, the, the TTL, ultimately what that's meant for is once the entry actually exists in DNS, mm -hmm. that if you're going to make changes to, since in this case it's a C name, who it's pointing at, like how long is it going to take for technically all the intermediary DNS caches as well as the caches on client machines to finally expire and pick up the new value. Right, and that is really the thing. You, you, you feel like, well, I changed it in this browser, it should, just it should change it here. Right. And it, yeah, that, that, that is not the, uh, the way DNS works. It is a very uh, laggy, asynchronous technology, shall we say. Mm -hmm. uh, and in this case, it's not ready yet, and we'll see how that works. But while we're waiting for that to expire between here and everywhere else, there's also your A record. Is that the computer that I pay you for? Uh, no, that is not the uh, specific IP address that you're paying for. There is a separate feature that, again, um, you can go ahead and purchase, which is you can actually buy unique IPv4 addresses mm -hmm. and then use them for your websites. But by default, what you're seeing here is the public IP address of the entire Azure Websites cluster that you're running on. Ah, okay. So this is the, the load balancer, effectively. Yes, this is effectively the IP address of the internet-facing load balancer tier. Okay. So then when I set up my, my domain here, this is important, because I want to do a thing called naked domains. Right. Which means I want to make it so when you go to keysleft.com, 
it serves. Yep. Oftentimes you'll find you go to www, you get a site, you go to the you go naked to the naked domain, and you get nothing. Get nothing. Yep. And there's several ways you can do that. You can do it with redirects. Yep. You can serve it up in both places and then do a canonicalization. In the example here, I just said that www is Azure Websites, and then the A record pointed to here. Yep. Which is yeah, that's a very simple way and an obvious way of doing that. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll I'll just clear it out and I'll type again. It actually I, I've done this before, Some and it goes like that. Yeah. I've done it other times, and you sit here for five minutes. Yeah, I'm not I'm not surprised. That, that's why, like I said, in all seriousness, always make sure you set these up well in advance so that you don't you don't lose any uh, yeah. sleep. Over I tell you it. though, I've had really really good luck with this stuff. I haven't found it very difficult at all. Uh, in this case here, of course, another important thing to, for people to remember is that this isn't my DNS that we're waiting for. To, it's not my computer. Correct, correct. This is, I mean, underneath the hood, ultimately, this what you're typing in on this form is turning into a request in a back end in Azure websites, and one of our servers is actually querying, in essence, somewhat indirectly, the uh, the internet DNS, and saying, hey, does this does this host name even exist? And right. so that's. That's part of what's going on is who knows where the DNS simple servers are, how long the replication delays are for mm -hmm. it to make it around, for it to finally hit us so that we can actually resolve the, uh, successfully resolve the, uh, the domain lookup. Exactly. And you'll notice here it does say uh, in the instructions, if you want to configure an A record, which is not what I'm doing, you have to do the verify. Because I've already done the verify, yep. I'm already cool. One thing that you can do also as a person sitting on your on your local machine is you yep. can type in M okay. NS lookup. Yep. yep, and see at least from your machine. And I could say, well, what's foo.keysleft.com uh, and see that it is set up. Ah, interesting. Okay, so we've got the alias. So that's from DNS Simple. So now it's actually able to point into yeah. in, into our system. So that means it's starting to make its way yes. across the wire. Now, yes. one of the things I can do is I could say, well, here at Microsoft, that's happened. You can see the address for the DNS at Microsoft, but I could try another server. Try Google okay. server. And I could do the exact same thing. Because th the question is, has it reached Eno more you know, enough places, right. a typical yep. number of places? Another one might be open DNS. So you could go and do this. And just by typing in NS lookup and then typing the domain, you're able to go and see that. So I'll shut this down, try it again. And there it is. So Yay. now, you know, in the few minutes that we waited, that has come back and I hit OK. Now you're going to then so, save this. Right. So ultimately what's happening in, inside of Azure Websites is all of those domains um, that you see there, we're saying, ah, okay, for this website, we can potentially have a request coming in where the host header said it was for, you know, keysleftazurewebsites.net, which mm -hmm. is, of course, the default, or it could be foo.keysleft.com, which you set up, or it came through the A record, et cetera, et cetera. Ultimately, it's just a matter of us programming the load balancer to say, Yes, this is a domain name we recognize, and oh, by the way, it's associated with this specific website, so we know how to route the uh, the HTTP traffic. Yeah, even though we had to wait a minute or two there, it's a good reminder to people that if you're waiting an hour or two or eight, There's, it's probably your configuration. Yes, correct. Cool. It's custom domains on Azure websites on Azure Friday.